بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful and peace and blessings be upon the most honorable prophet Muhammad his family and his companions The lecture today is about thyroid hormone biosynthesis and transport Thyroid hormones are iodinated thyronins so what's the definition of thyronins a thyronin is two tyrosines joined by ether linkage we have a lot to explain here so we have the term thyronins and tyrosine and we have ether linkage let's start with the basic building block of thyroid hormones which is tyrosine tyrosine is an amino acid this is the structure of tyrosine as an amino acid we have a, an alpha carbon attached to carboxyl group here and NH three or NH2 depending on the pH and it is attached to a phenyl group here so at this point this is phenyl alanine so without the phenyl group this is alanine and with the phenyl group this is phenyl alanine and if we add here hydroxyl so this is the structure of tyrosine so we have just mentioned that tyrosine is the building block of thyroid hormones in addition to thyroid hormones we can synthesize many other molecules from tyrosine for example if we add another hydroxyl group here so this is what's called dihydroxyphenyl alanine and we call it L-dopa this reaction is catalyzed by tyrosine hydroxylase then we can take out this carbon here so we will end up with dopamine also we can add a hydroxyl group here and what we have just synthesized is norepinephrine and then we can add a methyl group to the ni this nitrogen and we'll end up with epinephrine so from tyrosine we can synthesize L-dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. In addition to the thyroid hormone. Uh, back to our main subject, thyroid hormone biosynthesis and transport. So as we mentioned tyrosine is the building block of thyroid hormone and this is the structure of tyrosine if we add an iodide here so this is going to be three monoiodo tyrosine if we add iodide to the three as well as to the five position so we'll have another iodide here so we'll have three five diiodo tyrosine if we consider 
two molecules of diiodotyrosine associating with each other. So we'll end up with what's called ether linkage. And the molecule which comes out of that is called 3, 5, 3 prime, 5 prime, tetraiodothyronin. So thyronin comes from two tyrosine joined together by ether linkage. We call this T4. And this is one of the thyroid hormones. So if we associate one molecule of diiodotyrosine with monoiodotyrosine, joining them together with an ether linkage like that, so we'll end up with this structure, which is 3, 5, 3 prime, tri iodothyronin, and we call this T3. So these T4, T4 and T3 are the two thyroid hormones which are considered functioning. A diiodotyrosine with a monoiodotyrosine in which the 5' prime rather than the 3' prime carbon, which is iodinated, we will end up with a compound called 3, 5, 5' prime triiodothyronine, and we call this RT3, or reverse T3. T3 is the most potent form of thyroid hormone. RT3 is inactive. So the rationale behind these different forms is that the main form of the thyroid hormone which is synthesized in the thyroid gland is T4. T4 is converted into T3 in peripheral tissues by deiodination at the 5 prime position so that we end up with 3, 5, 3 prime triiodothyronine which is T3 which is the more potent form of thyroid hormone. This takes place in tissues where metabolism is high so we need this convergence so that T3 will perform the function. But if T4 happened to be in a tissue that is metabolically inactive, so it would rather be converted to the RT3 form, which is inactive in this particular tissue at that time. So it depends on the activity of the tissue, the conversion of T4 would be either to T3 if we need thyroid hormone activity or it would be to RT3 if we don't need thyroid hormone activity. Just to complete the picture, the definition of an ether linkage is an oxygen group that connects either two alkyl or two aryl groups. Uh, now we are going to consider an overview of thyroid hormone synthesis. As we know, the thyroid gland is composed of follicles like that. Each follicle is a kind of a, a globule or a ball, if you like, which has a cavity inside, which we call the follicular colloid, and it is lined with cuboidal cells like that. 
So if we consider one of these follicular cells and we are going to blow it up a little bit, so we will have a cell like that. This is the cell membrane and this is the cytosol and the nucleus inside the cell. We call the follicular cells, we call them thyrocytes. This part of the membrane which interface with the follicular colloid, we call it apical membrane, while we call this part which interface with the extracellular fluid or blood, we call it basal membrane. So in the follicular cell, the precursor of thyroid hormone is synthesized. It is a protein which is called thyroglobulin. It's a polypeptide, so it contains amino acid residues, and within these amino acid residues, we have the tyrosines, which become iodinated, and which pair together to form thyronins. So this is the precursor for the synthesis of thyroid hormone. We call it thyroglobulin. Also in the thyrocytes, this is the site for concentration of iodide from the circulation. In other words, iodide moves from the blood into the cell and it is concentrated in the thyroid follicular cells, the thyrocytes. This is performed actively through a special transporter which we call sodium iodide symporter. Also, on the basal membrane of the thyrocytes, we have a receptor for a pituitary hormone called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. When stimulated, it promotes two things. Thyrocyte growth, the growth of the cell itself, as well as thyroid hormone biosynthesis. In fact, TSH is very important for each single step of thyroid hormone biosynthesis. Now a few words about iodine. Iodine is an essential micronutrient and its recommended daily dietary intake is 150 microgram for adults. It increases to 200 microgram per day for pregnant and lactating women. For children it ranges between 50 to 250 microgram per day, depending on the age. It is excreted by the kidney. There is a worldwide pandemic of dietary iodine deficiency, defined as intake of less than 100 microgram per day. This pandemic affects about 2 billion people worldwide. In other words, about one-third of, wor of, of world population. One-third of world population suffer from dietary iodide deficiency. So it is a, a serious problem. 